Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for two Facebook groups fans of Serif Software and the Affinity Designer and Photo group. There are many tutorials out there that will show you how to replace a sky in an image. In fact I may have even made one myself at some point. But um, I did see a Photoshop tutorial the other day that was a, a slight variation on their theme and it's quite sort of subtle difference and I thought I'd show it to you in Affinity Photo whether you think it's better or not I will leave up to you to decide which way is best um, so this is the image I'm going to do this on and this is what it looked like with a different sky I mean my choice of sky may, could have been better but this was just for quickness um, and also I'm being a bit lazy here in the sense that I'm using a picture which I took of where I live um, and because there's a nice straight horizontal sky apart from this little bit at the end here it's going to make it easy for me to cut out I mean so it's going to hopefully make the video a bit quicker um, so first things first what I need to do is to um, cut out the bottom half of this picture which would be pretty much how it would be if you were doing this in the way you may have seen in other videos so for this I'm going to use the freehand selection tool which is part of the marquee menu you probably find yours by default is on rectangular marquee tool but the bottom option in that menu is the freehand selection tool and once you have that by default it, sh it, will, probably, it will be on freehand but we need to be on polygonal so I'll click on that and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in to start my selection so I'm just going to click once here and then the next time you click it will start drawing or dragging a line across your image now you would need to be a bit more careful with your selection than I'm going to be personally I'm a I almost pretty much hate this tool I'm not very good with it which is why I'm picking a picture where I really don't have to use it that much and you do have to be careful not to click too close together or too quickly otherwise the computer and program will see it as a double click and it will complete the selection for you before you've finished which is another annoying feature which I hate so I'm very sorry about this time consuming part of this almost there <coughs> wasn't the best bit of selecting the enemy now I'll press control and zero to zoom out and I'll come right to the end here I'll come outside the picture and then down below the picture all the way around until I come back to the start point and once I'm over the start point I'll double click and it will make that selection for me so now what I want to do once I have a selection is click on the refine button here and I'm going to manually set the feather to 0.5 so I'm just feathering it by half a pixel and at this point what you'd normally do in like previous videos or whatever, so you'd um, click apply so you have this selection again you could then use control and J to duplicate so you just have this level on its own and then you drop the sky in behind it this is where the sort of slight variation comes in because what I'm going to do now is down the bottom here where it's got 
output and selection, what I'm going to pick is new layer with mask and then click apply. Just have to wait for the computer to finish that. So what that has now done, this has put a new layer above the background and it has a layer mask attached to it and that layer mask is hiding off the sky area. Um, and this is where, again where a slight variation comes into play. Oh, now what I do is I will click on the background um, layer, which by default, the because of we've made this new layer above it, is turned off. Which we, we can leave it turned off, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a pixel layer. And then I'm going to flood fill this with white. So I'll select the flood fill tool. White is the foreground colour. And that will flood fill the background with white. So I'll come back to the top layer here, click on that. And now we need our sky. In fact, what I should have done was really stayed there um, on the pixel layer. Now, this is a sky image which I got, I think, off a computer disk once, a long time ago. But I'm just going to right click that and copy, come back to my image and make sure that it is the white solid layer that I have highlighted and then edit and paste and that will paste that above the white solid layer but below the sky, uh, the lang landscape with the mask on it. So all I need to do now is select the move tool and in it's a case of resizing and repositioning the sky. Now I'm going to press the control key while I drag out one of the corners and then just reposition this sky image until I find a position and clouds that I like the look of. Just drag this down slightly. So again, it may not be the perfect image for this particular background, but it, I am just doing this for speed. So I will leave that like that. Quite happy with that. Right, that would do. So I'll just click off of that tool. So, so that, I mean, you could technically just leave it at that point, but the subtlety of having this white background here is that the sky image from wherever you get it from, be it your own or one that you get off online or whatever, wherever, it may be a bit sort of sort of a different quality, let's say, sort of sharper or not as sharp as your f foreground. So if you lower the opacity of this slightly, you can have the white background that's below it to start to show it through and to sort of just slightly tonally and in other ways just diffuse the sharpness of that sky just to help blend it in a bit better with the landscape below. So I'll, I'll put that to 75%. Now if we come back to the top layer here, if I zoom in Hopefully I've done a fairly good job of selecting, but you may see some of that white solid area uh, layer just showing through the gap. It, I don't seem to have done too bad a job, but just in, just in case I had made a bad job of it here, for example, if I clicked on the layer mask, to make sure that that is the layer that I'm working on and then come to the brush tool and we have a hardness set of zero and I've got an opacity of about 20% let me just increase the size slightly I could 
paint black or white onto the layer mask to either bring back something that I've missed or to hide something that shouldn't have been there. Um, so let's try let's try the white here and if I just go around the edges where I probably did the, the least amount of um, detail selection when I was making this selection just to make sure that anything see I mean if I go too far like that I could then just go back to black and paint that away and hide any errors so because you're using the layer mask you can just refine the selection a bit I'll press control and zero to come out again now one thing that I will add now this wasn't in the Photoshop tutorial it's something that I've sort of thought about myself is this white layer you could if you wanted not have it as white it could be almost any color you want really but if I use the pixel selection option so if I click on this option here and pick a color from this picture let's say somewhere like that that color will now be represented in this dot here if I click on that dot it will make the foreground color the same color so if I now flood fill that layer with that color it will sort of tonally make the sky sort of slightly better in color to suit the image that you're working on I mean it may work in some images and not all images and you may not like the result you might prefer as, as it was white but I thought it was quite a good little extra feature that you might want to incorporate I found it worked better from if you pick a lighter colour from your picture, sort of the nearer to white as possible, the darker colours, and it depends on the mood of the picture you're trying to make, I suppose. But that's basically it, really. It's only a slight variation on other tutorials I've seen, but I'm um, hopefully it is worthy enough of a tutorial in its own right. So thank you for watching, and goodbye.